Hi, in this video we're gonna talk about the top of descent. By the end of this video you will know what the top of descent is, how can you calculate it and why the top of descent is so important. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, my name is Gabriele, I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and I help you to become a better pilot or make your head around aviation. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribe so you will not miss the next video. Before starting the today's topic, the top of descent, for me it's extremely important that you leave in the comment below any questions you may have throughout the video. Ok, I want to make sure that you get 100% of the content. Ok, let's start. What is the top of descent? The top of descent is the point at which you should leave your cruise and start the descending bound your uh, destination airport. Okay? If you're flying with a single engine piston like a Cessna 172 at 1000 to 2000 feet uh, above the mean sea level, it's quite easy to find out when to descend because you just look outside, you see the runway, you see the big picture and then you know you have to descend. You have kind of, you get a feeling, okay, when to start the descent. However, on a big airplane or aircraft that are flying at high altitude, it's quite impossible to do it this way, okay, because first of all, you, when you have to start the descent in order to approach your airport, you will not see the runway because you are far away since you are very high and on top of it, even though you see the runway, you're gonna be too late to start the descent, okay? Because if you wait to see the runway at 30,000 feet to start the descent, you need to descend in a holding, okay? So it doesn't really make sense. You need to start the descent at a specific point calculated by you in this case called top of descent. The jet aircraft, they use the FMS like the Boeing 737 with the VNAV future, what happens is that the a computer of the aircraft actually can calculate the top of the descent for the pilot, depending on your route, on your weight, on your tailwind, on your speed, on your cruise altitude, and all of these factors, the computer take them into consideration and create a top of descent for you. Okay? However, there is a way that you can calculate the top of descent by yourself. When I fly every time, I do trust the computer because it gives me a top of the sense, so I trust the computer. However, I always make a calculation, a rough calculation, and I cross-check the two informations, okay? Because never forget the computer, FMS, in the case of the Boeings, is just a computer. So if you put the wrong information into the computer, it's gonna give you the wrong answer. So, trust the computer, cross-check the computer, however, always you need to know when to start the design as a rough idea, okay? So you can cross-check both things. Happened to me in my career many years ago that I didn't really make this cross check by making the rough calculation in my head and then I end up being very high, okay? Because I put the wrong information to the computer and the computer calculated the top of this end based on the information that I set, okay? So that's why you set your computer and, and then you cross check with your rough number that you've got an idea. When calculating the top of the end, it's very important that your goal is that you arrive at the top of the end, okay, on the cruise. You lower the nose because you know the top of the descent is there. You close the thrust lever to idle and you perform your descent with idle thrust until the late stage of the final approach. Let's say when you put the flap for landing, then is when you add thrust. This is very good because you're gonna burn less fuel in this case because you're not gonna have any thrust in, so you will burn less fuel, so you will be more fuel efficient. And on top of it, you're gonna have you're gonna produce less CO2 emissions, okay? And this is a very important factor as well, okay? But by doing this descent in idle thrust, you have a, a problem. If you think, let's say you start a descent at 300 knots, okay, for example, and you want to decelerate to 250 knots, how do you do that? That's my question, okay? How can you decelerate if you have already the thrust to idle? The only way that you can decelerate be, uh, by having the thrust to idle is to pitch up a little bit, reduce your rate of descent, and that will allow you the speed to, de de to decrease, okay? The problem with that is whenever you pitch up because you've got your idle thrust, so you cannot put the thrust more to idle, when you pitch up to decelerate, that will cause you to uh, fly more track miles, okay? Because any time, so you descend, then you pitch up because you want to decelerate, and this will add extra track miles to your descent, okay? So when calculating the top of this endpoint, you need to take this into consideration as well. But no worries, we will do a practical example on the whiteboard in a second, as well as let me ask you what happens if you have tailwind compared to headwind, okay? The tailwind will push your aircraft, so you need to take into consideration the wind component as well. Okay, without further delay, enough of talking, let's jump into the whiteboard and we make a practical example. Look at the whiteboard here, let's imagine that you are cruising at Flight Travel 300, okay? So this is your aircraft, 
sorry for my drawing guys it's not, I know it's not perfect but it's the best I can do so let's say that you are you are at 30,000 feet okay and your speed is 280 knots okay and then you have a tailwind component that is pushing your aircraft of 30 knots okay so this is a, a just a number that I, I make up, okay? The, this calculation that you will see in a second will work out for any other numbers, okay? So what you want to know, when to start the descent, okay? In order to land at your destination airport, which is this one, okay? Sorry guys, for my drawing, again, I know it's not great, but I, my goal is to make sure that you get the concept, okay? So what you want to know is, okay, let's say your top of descent is here, so you want to know, okay, I started the descent here at 280 knots, okay, this is a 280 knots descending, so you need to lose altitude, and then once you reach flight level 100, okay, flight level 100, where you need to be 250 knots, you need to decelerate, so you need to reduce your rate of descent, okay, so you need to know how many miles is this rate of descent, uh, sorry, this uh, deceleration segment. Then you need to know how many uh, miles you need to descend from flight level 100 to, the, to a flight level where you actually start decelerating for flap uh, extension. Okay, so let's say a flight level 60 or 6,000 feet. Okay, so you need to know how many track miles is this segment for the flap uh, extension until you get to the 200 knots let's say and then you reach the ILS or the VR approach and you perform the landing so your goal whenever calculating the top of the same is that you need to know how many tra track miles from here to there you need okay so my top of the sand is the track mass that I need in order to lose the altitude decelerate the plane and take into consideration any any tailwind or headwind okay so let's see let's say how in practical we do these calculations okay so the first thing you need to know how many miles you need to lose your altitude so in this case you are cruising at 30,000 feet okay so what you have to do you have to take the first two digit of your altitude okay in this case it's 30 all right here we go and you multiply this by 3 so 30 multiplied by 3 is 90 so these are the nautical miles that you need to descend from flat travel 300 down to the runway okay but there is a problem because if you take only 90 miles this is the distance that you need from the top of the sand to pitch down and land on the runway but as we discussed, you will not land at the cruise speed. You will need to decelerate, you will need to take into consideration the tailwind and so on. Because if you only take 90 miles, it's good if you pitch down and you just point at the runway, then you land at 280, 290, 300 knots, depending on the speed at which you start the descent, okay? But we don't do that. You descend and then you decelerate and then you extend the flap and then you land. So the 90 miles is only for the 30,000 feet. Then you need to know how many nautical miles you need to decelerate from 280 knots, in this case, to the 200 knots for flap extension, okay? And the way we do that, okay, I can, I can put a box in here, okay? And the way we do that, we take per each 10 knots above 200 knots, you increase your distance for the top of the descent by 1 mile. So, the 280 knots means that we've got 80, not 80 knots above the 200, which is equal to 8 nautical miles, okay? So in order to decrease the speed, to decelerate from 280 to 200 for the flap extension, we need 8 miles more. So now we are taking into consideration our altitude and our speed, okay? So now we are taking, we are calculating the top of the sand for altitude and speed. However, as we saw here, we've got another problem, which is 30 knots of tailwind, okay? Since the tailwind will push us, okay, it will, it will be more difficult for us to decelerate, okay? So it will be the, the deceleration segment that we saw in here, for example, this segment here, with 30 knots tailwind is gonna be longer compared to a, a deceleration segment with no wind because the wind is actually pushing us, okay? But how much? So we take the, per each 10 knots of tailwind, okay? For each 10 knots of tailwind, we take one mile, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be 30 knots of tailwind. So we need an, an extra three nautical miles due to the wind, okay? So this is the altitude correction, okay, the altitude calculation, this is the speed calculation, 
okay? And this is the wind calculation, okay? Our top of this end is the sum of all these calculations. So we need 90 miles to lose the altitude. We need eight miles to lose the speed and we need three miles because of the tailwind. So if we sum up all of these, we're gonna come up with 90 plus eight plus three. It's gonna give us a top of this end. Our top of this end will be, will be located 100 and nautical miles from the runway. Okay, from the runway. Runway, all right? So what we need to do now is to start from the runway and then go backwards and calculate 101 nautical miles and see where the top of the sand will end up, okay? Once we know the distance that we need in order to lose the altitude, decrease the speed and take into account the wind, we know exactly where the top of the sand is located along our route, okay? Because we know, let's say the funnel is 10 miles, the arrival procedure is 20 miles and the, the, another procedure is another 20 miles. So what we do, we just go backwards and then we draw where the top of the sand is. For me, it's extremely important to understand that this is a rough calculation, okay? With this number, you're gonna be fine, okay? Even though you don't know the, the top of the sign from the computer, you just make this calculation, this, this, you're gonna be fine, okay? But it is extremely important that first, you understand that you need to calculate and cross-check all the time if you're high or low, okay? If you're higher or lower than the profile. If you're higher or lower, then you correct your path, okay? Because this is the top of the sign calculations. Once you start this end, you constantly need to check, okay, how, how high am I? I multiply this by three, my speed, my tailwind, and so on, and you constantly check, cross-check throughout the descent if you're high or low, okay? Because then you know how many miles you need to, uh, to lower the altitude, decrease the speed, and take the wind into consideration. You, you make a calculation on how many miles you've got to the runway, and then if you have less track miles, means that you are above the profile. So you need to increase your rate of descent. Okay, what we do is that normally what I do is I, I let the FMC, okay, in case of Boeing, the computer to calculate my top of descent. I know exactly where the top of descent from the navigation display, and then I make a calculation by myself mentally, and then I see if these two uh, top of descent, the top of descent of the computer, and my top of descent are pretty much similar. Then I trust the computer, okay? So never trust 100% the computer, always make a calculation by yourself. Okay. Another thing to take into consideration is your weight because the heavier you are, the more miles you need to descend. Okay, and the, the lighter you are, the less miles you need. Okay, the FMC will take this into consideration as well. The FMC as well take into consideration if you use the engine anti ice or not because whenever you use the anti ice, okay, the idle thrust is not gonna be let's say 20% because if you switch the engine anti ice on, the idle thrust will be around 24%, for example. Okay, and this 4% more on idle thrust will give you a little bit of thrust, thus, will. Uh, you will need more miles to descend because you're gonna have a little bit of thrust compared to a no anti ice that's gonna be uh, completely idle, okay? But this, the computer will take all these information under, uh, into consideration and will provide you a very specific and clear top of descent. The calculation that we made is gonna make sure that you land the plane, okay? You will land the plane, however, is a rough number that you need to calculate, okay? In order to make sure that the FMC is not giving you a completely wrong number. I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. This is the part one of a series of videos about this end that I'm gonna make, okay? So no worries if you still have questions. But anyway, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and then I will help you out. Also go to paloclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paddle training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you on the next one.